Okay, I've launched Bridge and I've opened up a folder that contains images, but I want to show you how I got there before I move forward. In this video, I'm going to demo how to preview and examine images, how to label, rate, and sort images, how to assign keywords and then sort images again, and then I want to show you how to open photos from Bridge into Photoshop. Now that's not all that Bridge can do. Um, I'm going to specifically demo those activities because to me they're kind of the most important right now at this, this uh, point in time. Keep in mind that chapter three in your textbook will show you other things that, that um, Bridge can do and I would like you reading and following along with the book. Um, the video here will kind of be a, a, a hands-on demo that you can follow through if the reading is a little confusing. And so the first thing you need to do when you launch Bridge is you need to find what you're looking for. And so pretend that when you're in Bridge, you're searching your computer. Pretend that, put it in full screen mode like I have so you can't see the desktop anywhere. And then pretend that, that the computer doesn't exist. I don't want to go to the finder and find pictures this way. I'm going to find everything from inside of Bridge. And so the first thing uh, you'll notice is on the left hand side, you'll have access to your computer and your hard drive. So you could navigate from your hard drive. And in my case, I have to go to my user, and I'm Jessica Curran, and then I have to go to my desktop, and then I have to find the source images folder. Um, you can also skip to desktop documents and pictures. You can change this if you want to. You can drag and drop folders so that if you're constantly using the same folder over and over again, you could add it to this list so that you don't have to find it. So for me, that means I'm going to go to desktop and then the source images folder. Now that I have the images on screen, everything in the folder is ready for me to go, I can preview and examine the pictures. And again, there's lots of ways to do this. I'm going to show you the way that I like the best. There's like key commands and things like that that are covered in the chapter. But I like to just take the slider in the bottom right hand corner of your window and slide it to the right. And you'll get a big preview of the pictures. You can make them as big as you want. So I'm going to make them really super big. And then I can scroll through the pictures until I find the one that I would want to edit. And I've just, I've just picked a bunch of random pictures to use for this activity. Um, I'm sure that I have said it already, and I'm sure I'll say it again. I'm not a photography teacher, and so when I give you these images, they're just random snapshots that I have on my computer for, for use in, the, in, in this class. And sometimes the pictures are included because they have a specific characteristic that we'll need to use later in the semester for an activity. For example, this one on the right hand side looks to me like it needs a levels or a curves adjustment. So we might use that when we are, are learning about levels and curves. As you scroll through, if you click on a picture, so I can click on this guy here, all the panels around will activate with information about that picture. And so if you click on the metadata, um, panel over here or pane, um, you can see the information about it. Now this is a photograph as opposed to the previous video and so I can see that it was captured at a 2.2 f-stop and that it has ISO 32. If you're not a photographer like I am it doesn't really mean too much to you. Like I know a little bit about f-stops and, and ISO. Um, but for us I, I can see that it's 3264 pixels by 2448. I can then use that to figure out how big I can print this which we learned about in chapter 2. Uh, the file size is 2.83. It has sRGB color mode um, as its color profile, and we learned that we want Adobe RGB, so I'll have to note that I have to change that. Um, and it has a bunch of different information about the, the file, and you can click through until you find the one that you want. Maybe you can't decide if you're going to use this one of the little gondola or that one, and something about the information might give it away um, to what you want for your project. Maybe there's some specification that's better about one or the other that you prefer. The next thing that you can do is you can rate and you can label your pictures and you can do this for many reasons. Um, most importantly it could be to eliminate pictures from a sample and so maybe you have 12 pictures of these flowers here. Same flowers over and over again and you're trying to figure out which flowers to include in a project and which won't work and as you go through you notice some are more blurry than others like this one has a short focal um, length where it's in focus in the middle but the outsides are kind of blurry. Um, maybe some of the pictures are completely blurry so you want to get rid of those. You can label them for whatever reason you need to, to label them by right clicking on a picture and you can go down to label and you can choose um, to select, it's a second, approved, review, etc. You can also label pictures. I selected the picture here. If you go to the label menu at the top, 
you can star rate and label them. So you could say, I like this picture, but it's like a three. It's not my favorite, but I really like this guy here. I'm going to label it as a five. And let me zoom out here so you can see what's happening. And as you label them, uh, they'll get little stars underneath them. And so they'll be placed in the order that you label them. So I really like, so let's say I'm trying to compare these three roses to use for the project. I really like the color and the placement of this one. So maybe I would label that as a five star rating. And this one, I'm gonna label it as a four star. And this rose, maybe I'm gonna give it a two because I don't like the angle that it's at. And if you star rate them, they'll get stars on the bottom and then you could sort the pictures by the star rating. If you select the picture, I really like this one. It reminds me of when I went to Jasper National Park uh, a couple summers ago. Uh, if I label it with a star, it puts it in one category, so I'm really going to like this one, so I'm going to give it five stars. But I'm also going to label it as select, meaning I want to highlight that, and I want to use it somewhere else. And maybe I want to review it, so I put it under review. Or maybe I want to mark it as something I need to do, and they get different colors. So I'll label each one of these a different setting so you can see which one gets which color. I got one more. Nope, no label. And you can see they're different colors. And so for me, I like green go, right? Green means it's great and I want to use it. And so if I don't want to use it, I would label it red and say, oh, I really don't like this image. And I would mark it as, oops, I can't remember the colors. There we go, as select, because to me, that means don't use it, it's red. And then maybe the ones I really like, I would label as green. Now you can use these labelings any way that you want, um, and then when you sort them, you can sort them by the ones you want to keep or the ones that have the most stars and, and different things like that. Okay, the next thing you might want to do is add keywords to your pictures. And so if you're scanning through, I have lots of random pictures from different places that I went, and I could label them or I could keyword them as being Jasper National Park or Vancouver or Edmonton or wherever I went, but I could also put keywords for what's in the picture so that later on, if I have thousands and thousands of pictures but I'm looking for wood grain texture, I could narrow down the selection to just pictures with wood grain in it, which will then let me figure out uh, which pictures might work for the project that I'm working on. And so if I go through and I select a picture, and on the right-hand side, I switch back to the Keyword tab, there are some defaults that I could select here. None of them are really appropriate for this picture. It has a wallet in it. It's on a train. It has a shadow. And so what I can do is in the top right-hand corner of that panel, I can create a new keyword, and I can label it Wallet. And then I can create another one that says train and maybe one more that says shadow and once I have them I can use them and say this image has those things in it now this image has pizza and poutine but I'm not going to use poutine because I don't think I can spell it but I'll put pizza and french fries and so I could add you can add categories if you want so these are categories events people places but I'll add a new keyword pizza and then french fries. This one is Jasper National Park and so if we're going to add keywords maybe Jasper is one of them. This one is also at Jasper um, but it's also on a gondola so I can add that. Make sure that you select them so this has a gondola and this has a gondola and this is Jasper and this one's also Jasper. You need to make sure you're selecting these options. There we go, it took a second to update. Uh, what I'm in, excited about is the wood grain though because that's the example that I want to use. And so I can go to all the pictures that have wood in them and I can either use the keyword wood or wood grain. I can use wood and I can add that certain pictures, like this has wood in the bottom, have wood 
And I can add, oops, I messed one up. Up here, this bench, this table has wood. And you can assign the keywords to the different pictures. Okay, when we come back to the next video, I will finish uh, my bridge demo by showing you how to sort based on a keyword and how to launch uh, photos from bridge into Photoshop. And I'll talk a little bit about why you'd want to do that.